I love the journey because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a self-published um, author. You know, all this are done by me. That all this process, you know, it's, 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 so all this are done by me. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's interesting seeing how an idea becomes something that you can hold and see, and something that's changing lives. Well. So it's a beautiful journey. I love it. I love when kids turn around and say, oh, that book is fantastic. I love it. Hello and a very warm welcome to my business, my customer from Bob Expo Media. Joining me today is Habi Elizabeth Akinteye, who is the founder and creative director at Tuims Publishing. She's also an author of several children's books published under Tuims Children's Book Imprint, a part of Tuims Publishing. Wow, Habi, okay. a warm Hello. welcome. Thank you for having me on the it's, show. I'm happy to be an, here. Yeah, it's an absolute joy to have you here today. Uh, Thank you. I've been looking forward to this conversation, just to hear your story, hear what it's all about, what's been going on. Um, how did you become a publisher and a children's author? Yeah, the, the journey um, started in 2015 because um, I was a Sunday school teacher that time. I still am. Uh, that time I needed to make a you know, um, lesson plan and I wasn't sure where to start, what to do. But then the, the topic that time was on Ten Commandments. And I was like, oh, I, I need to write it in such a way, in such a way that children will relate and understand properly because I know that yes they've taught you know Ten Commandments severally but then I wanted to do it in a way that is kind of like you know different and children can understand properly using story so I thought yeah let me write and that was when I realized that I could actually write so I wrote it and children loved the story you know because I use story to kind of explain the commandments and that was when I found out I could actually write and since then I've not stopped <laughs> and in 2018 although I was quiet for three years and in 2018 um, I founded Twems Publishing and then the main aim um, of Twems Publishing was just to help um, publishers out there who don't know how to go on about publishing, especially Christian publish. I mean, Christ, I mean, authors out there, sorry, authors who don't know how to go about publishing, how to, you know, release the book. So just especially Christians to help them to publish their books. And yeah. then uh, because of my love for children as well, I feel like I've got loads of messages for children. And to um, Twem's children's book, which is an imprint of Twem's publishing, we can release um, diverse books for children and um, books with messages, uh, inclusive books for children. And yeah, that's when we started and we're still going. It sounds what an incredible journey, uh, you know, to start with something that was, you know, you just felt the need to help somebody. You find yourself in a need to help a group of young people. You find yourself in a position where it was okay. Let's simplify this, and from there came a business, and yeah. it was that sort of epiphany that a lot of, you know, when you hear successful business owners talk about their businesses, I love hearing how things started and just hearing the way it came together through that need to simplify the Ten Commandments absolutely incredible and then to go on to start a publishing company as well which you know is another thing in, on its own speaking of which how difficult is it to set up a published company don't you need a lot of money for that sort of thing no um not really i i think it's all about you um learning and learning and learning to start so you don't really need a lot of money to start, but you need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in knowledge. I mean, um, it's, it's not easy, you know, to start a publishing firm, of course, 
but you need to develop yourself. And if you can't on your own, you need to employ the right people because it's a long process. I mean, from um, getting the manuscript together, from editing, I mean, editing, formatting the manuscript. And then, you know, in, actually with children's book, you need to get good illustrators on board and all that. So it's not um, an easy process, but you can start it with, you know, you don't need like thousands of pounds to start but then you need to invest in yourself you need knowledge and uh, you need to probably invest in and um, right people in your organization trainings so that yeah they can and do you job. enjoy the journey do you enjoy every aspect of it from the... i love it i love the journey because <laughs> I'm, I'm a self-published um author you know all these are done by me that all this process you know is is, is the, all these are done by me so uh, it's, 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 it's interesting seeing how an idea becomes something that you can hold and see and something that's changing life as well. So it's a beautiful journey. I love it. I love when kids turn around and say, oh, that book is fantastic. I love it. Uh, I love when parents turn around and say, oh, that's a very good story for my children. We'll learn from this as a family. So, yes, it's really, really and fulfilling and it's a beautiful journey i love it and again you said you know that love for children as well you know you've put in you know your two greatest loves uh, as an author and then of course you know for caring for children as well now teaching children you know, it's an important aspect of you know uh, life and it's something that uh, a lot of people struggle with it's not easy um how do you, how can we encourage children to read? What are the steps we need to take? To encourage them to, I think it's, we ourselves have to be readers. I mean, as parents, we have to be readers ourselves, you know, um, because children don't care. I always say that, you know, they emulate us parents. So we need to, you know, build that. If you're not a reader, you try, you know, read. So they see you read sometimes. And it's always good to instill the love of reading in children from very young age, you know, from, so they, they say you should be reading to them while they're still in the womb. So that's, that's as early as you need to start reading to your kids. And when they have, start reading, read to your kids because knowledge is power and books is amazing because this is where they get vocabularies. This is where they get new ideas you know they learn social skills good books teach children amazing you know life skills so I always say parents be readers yourself and then make sure that your house is filled with books every nooks and cranny <laughs> like every 10 minutes yeah yes it's, that's just it just Keep reading. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll have that, books. Have books everywhere. <laughs> that's that's good. That's really good. And you know, it's it's important. And I love to hear you know the passion for reading, especially in days like you know we have now, where it's so easy just to you know listen to an audio book and you know or to uh, put on something else rather than actually reading words. Uh, it's it's always good to you know some people just love the smell of paper and the book and you know just sat down and relax and just the whole environment of reading uh, there's a joy yeah. about that as well isn't there i like it yeah yeah people parents have asked me before um about audiobooks like oh how about audiobooks you know it's it's not the same thing it's not the same just like you've just said about you know the smell of the, of the book it's you know there is nothing like it uh, and then when you see some words there sometimes the visual it stays more than you just listening and you know is i likelihood of you getting distracted and you don't pick all the vocabularies that should have been picked or the quotations that you should have picked you know so um I, books, I think books cannot be eradicated. No. <laughs> just maybe, maybe audio books for maybe when you're relaxing and just, you know, you want to just, but when you want to do serious reading, I think you should have a book in front of you. That's good. And um, a lot of what you do is reaching out to uh, children whose uh, language, English is a second language. 
Uh, so just to help them again, you know, you were saying um, so that at least they don't feel left behind. Yes. Yeah. Um, in 2018, I think it was 18, um, myself and two other moms started um, uh, a club for children, um, which is a reading club. And there we had um, children who just came from Africa. Africa or some other countries, English is not their first language. And then we, we, all we were just doing was just to instill the love of reading. We would go to the library and then just encourage them, use reward system. And then at that point, when to be, you know, because I'm, I'm times publishing in a way as well, it's kind of like, you know, we published um, um, a diary for them to use like a sort of a challenge so in the diary um if they read up to like 10 books in a month they get gold and when they own gold they get you know they get to pick um reward first so we started seeing that competition in the children wanting to get gold so they get to pick the reward first so I think that really worked and these children we probably like like in the back at the in, in the initial stage, they started coming out of their shells because they want to be part of this. They want to, so they were reading, and eventually we're seeing this change in their in their English, in their diction, and the way they talk. The confidence was coming out. Even um, the parents were giving feedbacks about how they're now you know, performing in school. So yeah, it was good to see that change. That you know, just these three months come together and decide on using reward system and the diary to kind of record their reading and you know it works and then yes it was amazing to see the results that came out of that and it's still happening <laughs> so when the pandemic hit um we took our reading online our reading club online even though it was a bit difficult to get the reading going so i'm still encouraging reading but then every week i was teaching them creative writing because i thought you know have this knowledge let me share with kids because I love them, I believe, you know, we need to, you know, instill whatever we want to instill in them as, I mean, the positive things in them while they're young, so that they become brilliant adults and the things that we didn't have growing up, they have it and they can be the best they can be. So yes, I, every week on Thursdays today, for example, we're having a class on Zoom. So teaching them creative writing every week and it's amazing. I was even challenged two weeks ago when I made two, two of them from the class, um, judges over the others and the way they were being constructive in their criticism. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at other people's writing and they were being diplomatic. I was just amazed. So yeah, that's where we're happy online on Zoom doing creative writing at the moment. We are not in the library yet, but hopefully in January, we'll go back to the library. It's incredible to hear that. And, you know, your passion and enthusiasm comes across and, you know, what you're doing for these young people because you're changing lives, you're impacting lives. And these yeah, young children will go on to do some great things in the future, uh, become doctors, yeah. lawyers, and so on. And yeah. you've had your input on that. So I'm sure that's something that you're very proud of. Yeah. Now, with your books, uh, there has to be a favourite one. Which one's your favourite? Uh, <laughs> my favourite <laughs> one is the one I just released. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's titled I'm Beautifully Made. Okay, that's a great title. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you more? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this book, uh, it, I just love it. Um, I wrote it in 2015. It was launched. But then I felt there is much to the book than because I illustrated it myself in the first place. And I thought, no, I'm going to do it better this time. So I got one of my brilliant illustrators to illustrate this for me. And it's an inclusive book, a diverse book, a book that encourages children to believe in themselves and to love themselves, um, no matter who they have, what you know, challenges they have. Because in my in this story, I'm beautifully made. Um, little girl Belle uh, has um, physical challenges. But then she believes, you know, she's kind of like thinking she's full of imagination and she's thinking, what could have been worse? Even though, I, you know, I have these challenges, but 
I'm not that bad at all. God made me in this beautiful image. I'm beautiful the way I am. And then she has this fear of people calling her names or people um, turning around and, you know, laughing at her or staring at her. And then she has, uh, can I go out to play? She has a uh, uh, dad if she should go out to play. And the dad was like, well, this is up to you if you, have, if you feel confidence enough to go out to play. And Belle is a mixed race kid as well. The dad is black, mom is white. And yeah, eventually um, she went up. But I don't want to tell you everything. Don't, yeah, don't <laughs> you know? give, don't give so it away. She went out to play and yeah. then something happens. And <laughs> don't give it yeah. away. Don't give it away. So people have to purchase the book in order to find out what happens yeah. next. Yes. <laughs> Should I show you the cover? Please, yes. Yeah. Let's see the cover. Wow. Oh, and it's beautifully illustrated as well, isn't it? Yes. I am yes, beautifully I'm made. Just, what a wonderful yeah. book. Please That's exactly what, yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's my favorite page there. What a beautiful book. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. And Thank where, you. Where, and where can people get hold of this book? It's on houseofsefa.com um, and twinsbooks.com. Okay, we'll come back to you later on for, for that information again. Thank but you. yeah, you see, again, you know, just hearing that, you know, it was warm and nice hearing that story. And it takes me back to the days when, um, you know, coming back from school, I used to love running to the library, even the mobile library, getting a oh, book yeah. and going home and reading that book and just getting into it. You see, you know, it was so exciting uh, as a child and, you know, for young children to uh, get into reading early, I think is very important. So, you know, for you to be putting this work out there, you know, it's again, incredible. Uh, and uh, yes, let's uh, let's keep the good work going. So uh, now let's um, talk about, you know, as a business owner, the past year, how's it been for you? Well, it's been tough um, with the pandemic. Yes, it's been really tough. And with me um, doing other things as well. Um, so it, um, it's like I'm doing part-time things. So um, all the energy, I think, is not really in one place but this year i mean in the next year 2022 we open to focus more on our publishing and then we probably just um, leave all the things and focus on publishing and see how we can help other people other um authors come on board and though we've helped all um, authors to publish their books but we want to do more of this and get more books published on the twins imprint so I have got uh, more books coming out, lined up, um, coming, you know, in these few weeks and in few months, I've got books for kids coming out. So all energy is going there on, on publishing now. And though the past years have been full of, you know, it's like kind of like growing, we're growing, but then things are, you know, taking shape now. And then, no, that's, that's, that's great. And it's, it's nice when you've got a good business plan like that, because, the next question I was going to ask you is what advice would you give uh, to other business owners? What could they do to plan better? I would say um, keep going, have your business plan, of course, and keep at it. Yeah, definitely, you know, in business, there will be like, you know, times where there are ups and downs, but don't let the downs get you down. Keep going. Um, believe in your dreams believe in the vision of the business and um, keep at it yeah and then keep investing in yourself as well it's, yeah you know yeah that's, that's all and, and that's it isn't it it's just again keep investing in yourself keep planning yeah. um yeah. and just have that vision so that you can work towards that yes keep going keep going don't stop <laughs> even when you feel stop. like don't stop <laughs> So, <laughs> so tell me again in terms of um, you know what you enjoy the most. Uh, let's let's talk a bit more about that again. Okay, <laughs> what I enjoy the most is 
writing, <laughs> writing these wonderful um, books for kids. I've written in a children's book, but a different, like this, I'm beautifully made this for age three plus, and I've written chapter books for seven plus. Uh, I write funny books. There's one coming out soon, which is funny for kids. Um, yes, I think um, the sky is not limits really to what I can do in the children's book industry. Um, so yes, I enjoy writing. And the most beautiful thing is when I see the book in, in hardcover, you know, <laughs> I love it when I see the paperback done. Um, it's beautiful. I enjoy the, the journey of writing and getting the book published. Wow. So you're enjoying every day? Every day. Good. <laughs> every day. I love it. <laughs> I love it. My my kids are saying when I hear anything, I say, "Oh, I've got an idea for a book." Like, no, stop. We've got a list that we need to publish. <laughs> Don't add to that list again for now. So, <laughs> so your creative mind is just constantly uh, coming up with new concepts yeah. and so many ideas. I thank God for that because um, I didn't know I had the talents to write until that 2015 when that happened. So yes, all glory to God for that. So I won't take that glory. But oh, yes, yeah. I can. You know, <laughs> so so um, we, we know the book is uh, out now. We know that there's going to be more uh, books at release next year. It's going to be a busy year for you, 2022. Um, yeah. Of course, we also know that, uh, you know, you want to get back into libraries and uh, do more things as well. But, you know, is there more that people can do, connect with you? Because there'll be people watching this, listening to this and saying, how can I connect? How can I connect with Javi? Um, yes, you can connect with me. I'm on Instagram. Um, Abby, uh, I can say on Instagram. Um, though I'm not that um, great on <laughs> social media. I'm working on that. So <laughs> my social media platform is a bit not great at the moment. But I'm working on, you know, putting more content on it. And you can contact me via that medium. Um, Twemsbook.com, you can reach me on there on the contact page. You can contact me on there. Um, and then I'm going to be having some training uh, for people who want to go into publishing. Um, so I'll be having training coming. I have not got a lot of details on that at the moment, but yes, that will be on my um, Instagram page as that comes clearer. But then sounds, there'll be training. Yeah. Sounds really exciting. And I think there's a lot to come up. So for our audience, they really need to connect with you on Instagram and uh, find the work that you're doing there uh, because there's some great things that are in the pipeline and it's a good time for people to jump on board with what you're doing. Thank you very much. What final words would you like to leave our audience with? Yeah, um, what I would like to say is going to be in relation to children. I would say that um, try to instill positive things in your children and try to encourage them to be the best that they can be. Um, one of my books is on positive um, affirmations. Get them to use positive affirmations um, every day to believe in themselves. Um, try to be positive as well, because if you are positive, children watch us and, you know, they just emulate what we do and then they become positive as well. So um, it's always good to um, raise children who uh, you know to train up our children at, at this when they're young because it's always hard to um, repair your broken adults so yes keep doing what you're doing for your children and um, you'll be the best it can be incredible well I couldn't have put it any better myself because mm -hmm. when I think about you and what what you've achieved uh, it's you know that that pretty much sums it up you're somebody who found yourself in a situation just doing what you do ordinary you, you've got your uh, Sunday school you've been given a task of bringing the Ten Commandments to these children but you thought how can I simplify this how can I make this better and uh, there's one scripture that says you know uh, where Jesus talks about the kingdom for the little ones 
you know, uh, just to paraphrase it, it's it's about them as well. If you, you know, make it as if you if you make it as simple as is for the small ones, or if you embrace it as the small ones do, life can yeah. be amazing, and that's incredible because that's what's happened to you. Your life has turned out to be an incredible life. You've done some things that I'm sure that you look back on and you have to pinch yourself and say, how did I get here? Um, You know, from that Sunday school service of just simply making the Ten Commandments much simpler for those kids to going on to publish books, uh, to becoming a publisher, to doing some incredible things and there's still some more to come so congratulations to you and thank thank you you for your time yeah and just to add to what you just said that scripture is my favorite scripture as well (laughs) I just want to be like a little child and then you have to be in that space that realm to be able to write for children as well so yes thank you for sharing that as well yeah incredible happy thank you (laughs) thank you very much for having me (laughs) If you want some amazing inspiration, check out the videos next to me and I'll see you right there.